All right, everyone, here we go. It is time to play Paladin of the Sky. Paladin, continue game. Now loading. Let's load the game. You are in statistic shop. I should really go to breakfast now. All right, so we are continuing from where we left off. Recreation floor two. So uh, keep going here. Dinner time restaurant, exclusively for dinner. Fucking dining area for breakfast and lunch meals only. How is that Let me see. Fucking dining. So you can hit Z to have it copied to your clipboard. I'm gonna run dot notepad here. Untitled. Fucking only. L and break for area dining. Fucking A F A L K I N. F A L K I. I think that's supposed to be. <laughs> I think that's supposed to be Falcon. But it's just reading it weird. Notepad. Don't. All right. Let's uh, continue here. Meanwhile. And we have a cutscene. You're sure then? A young man said to an older Frenchman. Absolutely. The Frenchman replied. The rumors are true. How many? The younger man asked. Who knows, Jaden? Who knows? The Frenchman said. Jaden. Uh oh. But what I do know is, this world will be a much happier place come tomorrow. You're going ahead with the plan then, even though there are thousands of people on board who aren't associated with the scheme at all? Jaden, the younger man, asked. Certainly. The Frenchman replied simply. Not obviously of course, very quiet like. Nobody will know we were behind it, except for us. Not everybody believes in the greater good. This ship could very easily hold the last of the dragon halflings. They cackled for a moment. That does not sound good. How do you want me to do it? Jaden asked. That, that just does not sound good at all. I'll tell you, but not here. Of course not. Come, let us leave this place, and we shall talk. Finally. My mom said when she saw us. And we go back to our main characters. You're late, that's for sure. What kept you? It's a long story, tell you later. I replied. You keep saying that, are you ever going to tell me? She asked. Hopefully. I said. We ate our food contentedly. Eggs Benedict for me, oatmeal for my mother, and various other breakfast foods for the others. We finished eating, smiles on our faces and some pancake on Gabe's face. Hey uh, Gabriel, where's your mom? I asked curiously. She's probably in our cabin. He said. What cabin number? I asked. Cabin, cabin, I think it was cabin 39. He said. Cabin 39, that's where we have to go. Then we'll head there. Kelly said. So, uh... We will do that. Now, I'm gonna... I'm gonna get out of here. Actually, there is one more place that we should go. There is another restaurant. General Gaming Facility. I'm trying to figure out where it is. Um... You are in Recreation Floor 2. Actually, I think it's on floor 3. Fucking dining area for breakfast and that name is not being pronounced correctly. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking dining area. Recreation floor three. The sign is old and faded. At one point, it appears to have held a message against littering. And Bob's Beer Bar. <laughs> Greater Power Church. Anyone care for some church? After all. 
Greater Power Church. After all, I am recording this on a Sunday. Greater. Aha. This this room will become important later. Right now, it's just empty though. But uh, yeah. And and it looks like they're holding their service here. So we'll just uh, quietly back out of here because uh, I am not uh, I am not a churchgoer. So let's just uh, get out of here. Let's see what this door is. Yeah. Under construction. Uh. Hello. This room is currently under construction. I'm afraid nobody is allowed past. I'm afraid you need to leave. Incidentally, if you run across a rare item called Galactic Dust, let me know. Aha. The stuff's not exactly valuable on its own, but if you can find me enough of it, it would be very useful for building certain parts of this area. So this is where you go when you get all the Galactic Dusts. I'm not getting out of here. Record. I think that's all there is on this floor, actually. Greater uh, Billy and Bob's near Bob. I don't want to go in there yet. I think it's on recreation floor one. Recreation floor two. Recreation. Zerobic Casino. Denari Cafe. Here we go. So I'm going to go in here. Because there's a couple of things that I want to pick up in here. Namely, a treasure. And... Kelly found a golden spoon. Kelly stored the golden spoon in the treasure's pocket. So there's that. There's also something else in here. Kelly found a healing potion. Alright. That'll come in handy. Ah. Where did you come from? You nearly made me spill my coffee. New updates are available. Click to install them using Windows Update. Okay, shut up. That was not part of the game, that was Windows. <laughs> Can I get you anything? No, you can't. Alright, so let's, let's get out of here. And uh, go back to the cabins. Residential floor five. Residential floor two. Residential floor two. All right, now I think. Let's see. Here. Cabin forty-eight. Cabin 41. Right here. Mom, I'm back. The boy yelled as we entered. A woman in her mid-fifties came out of the bathroom. Hey, Gabe. She said. Who are your friends? This is Ross, this is Kelly, and this is Cecil. Gabriel introduced us. I'm glad you've met some friends. You look a little worse for wear though, where have you all been? Gabriel explained how we chased Bert into his palace and defeated him in combat. So, your friends are, like you? His mom asked. Yes, we are. They're halflings, if that's what you mean. He replied. Well then, I wanna see them fight. 
she said enthusiastically. What? I asked, mouth gaping. Mom's really into friendly combat. Gabriel explained. Oh, right, okay then. I said, unsure. Magic doesn't work on her though, so your scrolls and your die are of no use to you. Gabriel warned. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on a second. If she's human, why doesn't magic work on her? I'm confused. But then, how are we? I started to say, but she lunged to attack. Patricia has challenged you to a battle. Select your move, roll dice. Right, let's see here. Kelly, defuse a cat diabolical. Let's just try this here. Yeah! Diabolical fire! Kelly casts a perfect diabolical fire, but Patricia does not seem harmed. What? Patricia attacks Kelly, dealing 361. Select your move, roll Holy dice. Crap. 89 of 450, 100%. Slice with knife. Alright, Patricia, goodbye. Kelly slices the opponent with a knife, dealing 245 damage. Patricia defeated. Kelly has gained 500 experience points. <laughs> Cecil has increased to level 13. Strength has increased by 3, defense by 2 and health by 5. Gabriel has increased to level 10. Strength, Kelly has received 50 coins. You go mom. Gabriel cheered. Okay, I don't get that, but okay, whatever. She fought good, but we still won. I said cheerfully. We should go to the third wing. Gabriel said. They're serving hot dogs. Yum, sounds good. I said. We've just eaten though, how can you already be hungry again? Well, it is lunch time, you know. Gabriel shot back. Alright then, let's go. I said, chuckling. Alright, let's go, but first I'm gonna go over here. Kelly slept in the bed. Everyone's health was fully restored. Would you like saving game? Game save. I'm gonna save the game, and then we are going to go. I should grab a hot dog on me three. Alright, let's do that. Let's do this! Recreation floor one. Rec. Rec. Going over here. Alright. Alright, guys, I am back. I actually had to pause the recording and do some things because this next upcoming boss is rather difficult, so I went ahead and upgraded some of Kelly's stats. So, I am about to step on the teleporter that will take me to wing 3. Here we go. Paladin of Pal- Dragon. As a reminder, I should grab a hot dog on wing 3. Here we are. Kelly said. Gabriel was already dashing for the hot dog stand. We followed him. We got a table over in the corner and enjoyed our lunch. So, Gabriel, where did you live? Kelly asked. Ohio, in the US of A, Gabriel said, adding. Ohio, alright. Not that we really have countries now after the war. How about you? Various places, we were always moving for one reason or another. I said casually. This was especially true of the past three years. The past three years, I traveled all around the globe to find Stella, my father's killer. I didn't say this out loud, though. Excuse me, mind if I join you? A voice said, startling me. Jason, the son of Bert, was standing beside our table. Help yourself. I said. Thanks, man. He said. I, um, I saw my father in the medical area. Yep, we beat him up pretty good. He, uh, looked pretty battered up. Yep. He was being very violent, we had to protect ourselves. Cecil said indignantly. Oh, I don't doubt that. He said sadly. Just, I don't know man. He was just out of it, that's all. 
You shouldn't think ill of him. Should. Do. I thought to myself. Yep, I should and I do. Listen, will you have a battle with me? He asked. Yeah, why not? We'll, we'll beat the crap out of you. Why? I asked. I was beginning to grow tired from all the combat. I want to see how powerful you are. He said. Really now? Uh, okay, I guess we'll battle you. I said, unsure. Alright, let's do this. Great. He said. Jason has ch- Use a diabolical fire, base- hey Yeah. Diabolical fire! Kelly casts a perfect diabolical fire, dealing 89 damage. Jason attacks Kelly, dealing 31 damage. So you can Much better. Diab- hey Yeah. Diabolical fire! Kelly casts a perfect diabolical fire, dealing 94 damage. Jason attacks Kelly, dealing 62 damage. Select you die. Hey yeah! Diabolical fire! Kelly casts a perfect diabolical fire, dealing 99 damage. Jason attacks Kelly, dealing 110 damage. Select 30%. 247. You can't die. Hey yeah! Diabolical fire! Kelly, Jason attacks Kelly, dealing 170 damage. Select 3%. Holy cow. 77. Use a die. Hey, yeah! Diabolical fire! Kelly, Jason defeated. There we go. Kelly has gained 700 experience points. <laughs> Kelly has increased to level 16. Strength has increased by 3, defense by 0 and health by 30. Gabriel has increased to level 11. Strength, Kelly has received 60 coins. My father didn't stand a chance. Jason said sadly. Nope, he didn't. Suppose I should be happy about that, but he trailed off. Anyway, take this as a gift of my appreciation. Kelly found a die. Kelly stored the die in the item's pocket. Hey, can we go play air hockey? The overly excited Gabriel asked. Uh-oh. Sure, why ever not? I asked. Come on, buddy, let's go. Sure, why not? Recreation Floor 3. Why not? We have nothing better to do on this ship anyway, so... Let's, uh... Oops, where's the... There we go. There we go. Recreation floor two. Alright. We're gonna look for that gaming area. The general gaming facility. General? Here we go. Let's have a game, Ross. Please, please. Gay begged. Of course, come on. I said. One thing though, I've never played before. Mind teaching me the rules? Sure. Gabe responded. It's real easy. You move your cursor to at most one square away from the round thing on the board, the puck. Press and hold enter, followed by one of the four arrow keys. Okay, now you do realize that this is majorly breaking the fourth wall, but that's alright. Whichever arrow key you press determines the direction of the hockey puck. The quicker in succession you press the enter and directional keys determines how hard you hit the puck, so it's often a good idea to try and press them at the same time. Right, come on. Ah darn. Maybe next time. Gabriel said sadly. Yes, I win! I win! Excuse me? A familiar voice said. It was Director Simon Shevern. I win! 
because I am the ultimate champion. Hello, sir. I said respectfully. Pardon my interruption, may I speak to you over there for a minute? He asked. Certainly, Mr. Chevron. I said. You are Ross, correct? He asked. Sure am. I responded. Right, I am in charge of the rescue operation. He said. In addition to my directing duties, I mean. I just wanted to warn you. Some people have seen you battling, some of them are quite convinced you're one of the halflings. I just wanted to warn you. Right. I said, frustrated. Is something bothering you? Director Chevron asked. HMM? I questioned. Oh, nothing related, sorry. I said. My mind was once again pondering my father's killer. If you need someone to talk to, I'm a good listener. Chevron offered. Okay, this is a random stranger that we just met, but okay. Well, well I, I stuttered, trying to decide whether or not I wish to divulge my secrets. Okay, well that's... wow. It's my father. I finally said. My father was named Cruel Claw. He was a good fighter, one of the best. One night, while he was sleeping, a woman by the name of Stella McCoy snuck up on him and, and... She shot a bullet through his chest. Uh-oh. I began to tear up. It's tear, but that's alright. I never even got to say goodbye. We were close when I was growing up. I didn't know what to think when the Human Dragon War started. I was angry with him, very very angry. He left mom to fight with the dragons instead of staying to protect her. Well, I mean he was pr pr protecting his species, but yeah, who knows. I yelled at him, called him some names, but he left anyway. A few months later, I received the news he was killed by Stella McCoy. Simon Chevron was quiet, very quiet indeed. He appeared to be thinking. Would you like to say goodbye to your father? He asked eventually. What? Sure I would, if he was still alive. I said. I don't think death necessarily has to be a barrier to goodbyes. He said. What? Tell you what, meet me on the fifth wing tonight at 10 p.m. The fifth wing, but I started to say. Yeah, it's off limits. He said. If anyone tries to stop you, just tell them that Director Chevron sent you. We walked back over to the air hockey table. That's... That's a little tidbit for later. Before I go, Ross, wanna have a game of air hockey? Simon asked. Yep. I replied confidently.
Wow, such skill, I haven't seen since, since. Yes, I won again. Well, never mind. I want to give you something. Kelly found a legendary hockey puck. Kelly stored the legendary hockey puck in the treasure's pocket. It may seem ordinary to you, but treasure it. Well, that was fun. I said smiling. Yeah. Director Chevron agreed. Well, I've got to go now. As much fun as it is, it gets frowned upon if I spend too much work time playing air hockey. He said chuckling. <laughs>《I should relax a little at the general gaming facility. Uh -oh. What in the world? I exclaimed. So, when you walk out of the door, you get that little cutscene. But the Cecil shouted. I'm sorry, Gabriel said. I just wanted to see what that did. Uh. What what did? Kelly shouted impatiently. This witch, Gabriel said, pointing. Uh. What exactly happened? Kelly asked. Well, as you saw, there was a flash of light down near the back of the gaming facility, and I think something appeared there. I explained. Cool. Gabriel said. Let's go see. We walked toward the source of the light, Kelly scolding Gabriel about not pressing things he didn't know what did all the way. Right. Drag party. 107 of 480. Uh, I think before Rec I do that though, I am going to go save the game. Recreation floor three. Re Resident. Let's go over here to one of the cabins. Do, 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 do. I'm going. Some developer of games for the blind is ho. Oh, that's a Kelly slept in the saving game. game. All right, let's go check that out. And actually, I think what I'll do. what happened in here so I'm gonna just walking south Aha. internal electronics I never knew there was a secret area behind the general gaming facility. I suppose that teleporter right there will take me back to the general gaming facility. Ooh, this music is pretty good. So... General Game... 